Wild pigs represent one of the most serious threats to Ontario's environment, economy, and society today. As a volunteer with the Wild Pig Surveillance Program, you're playing an active role in an effort to stop the spread of this invasive species while contributing to meaningful citizen science. On behalf of the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters, thank you. When your package arrives in the mail, your first step should be to ensure that all the required items are present. You can find the list of items within the Trail Camera Detection Protocol. Next, take some time to read through the enclosed documents carefully, as they include important information about the camera setup, site selection, bait choice, and more. Once you've reviewed the written materials, remove the camera from the kit and lockbox and install the eight AA batteries. Be sure to double check that your camera already has one memory card installed. Turn the camera on to ensure it is in good working order. If the screen turns on, you know the batteries were installed properly. If it does not, try adjusting the AA batteries until it turns on. All cameras have been tested and are in good working order, though sometimes there may be a delay in the unit booting up. Next, set the correct date and time on the camera. Once this is completed, ensure the camera settings are set to 5 minute delays with 5 pictures taken during each trigger. If you're unsure how to achieve this, refer to the enclosed manual for your camera model. Leave all other settings on their default. Once you're done setting up the camera, shut it down by holding the OK button for 2 seconds or by switching to OFF. Ideally, trail cameras should be set up wherever there is sign of wild pigs or other wildlife. These can include tracks, which look similar to those of a white-tailed deer, except the front toes of a wild pig are more rounded and point slightly outward, whereas those of a deer point in. Additionally, a pig's dew claws are wider than the front toes. Upturned and heavily disturbed or seemingly plowed soil from rooting, where a pig uses its snout to dig up soil in search of food. Wallows, which are pig-sized indents in the mud, often filled with water where animals roll and loaf around. These may be more common during the warmer months as pigs use the water to cool themselves. Rubs, where pigs scratch themselves against rocks, trees, or fence posts. Tusk marks and hair. Scat, or game trails. Although they are highly adaptable, wild pigs do have preferred habitats. Locations where it is likely to find sign include deciduous forests, crops, pastures, and especially wetlands and shoreline areas. Wild pigs consume primarily vegetation like crops, tubers, roots, grasses, and mass crops like acorns, so the presence of these food sources is a good place to start looking for sign. If there is no direct evidence of wild pig activity in the area, choose sites which are clearly used by other animals, such as deer trails, and have an abundance of low-lying vegetation in or close to these preferred habitats. A variety of baits can be effectively used to attract wild pigs, including dog food, fruits and vegetables, grains, syrups, and commercial baits, but the most popular and accessible bait is corn. Straight, whole kernel corn can be used for much of the year, but is strongly discouraged during the winter months due to its potentially harmful or even fatal effects on deer. During the winter, corn can be mixed with whole oats at a minimum of 1 to 1 ratio to avoid this problem. An alternative year-round baiting option is soured corn. Soured corn is whole kernel corn which has been fermented in water to reduce attraction by non-target species such as deer. For more details on making soured corn, see our included trail camera detection protocol. Another baiting option for wild pigs is a salt lick. If you're going this route, we recommend using a blue cobalt salt block. Once you have decided on your location and choice of bait, it's time to set up the camera. Gather the camera, lockbox, python lock, padlock, keys, and bait, and bring them to your intended camera location. You can begin by placing your bait. Spreadable bait should be distributed across the site rather than dumped into a single pile. Next, choose a tree or fence post to affix your camera to. The distance from the camera to target area will depend on the trigger range of each camera, but farther is generally better, assuming this allows for reliable triggers. Wherever possible, cameras should also be facing north to prevent being triggered by the sun. Once you've decided on a tree or fence post, remove the front plate of your lockbox and attach it with the python lock roughly one meter above the ground. You can also use the enclosed strap in the kit if the python lock is not enough. Now, place your camera inside the security box and turn it on. 
Replace the front plate of your lockbox and using the padlock, lock the bottom lip of your security box. Be sure to cut down any vegetation that may obstruct the camera's view of your bait or trigger the camera in the wind. Before leaving, ensure that you have both keys in hand and that your camera is secured tightly to the tree. In this example, we chose an area on private property in a woodlot that is adjacent to a pig farm. Every one to two weeks, return to the camera site with additional bait. First, check the bait pile to see if there is still enough bait or if you should add more. Next, check the camera by unlocking the padlock and opening the face cover of the trail camera. Here, depending on your camera, you can scroll through photos using the screen of the camera for any suspected pigs, or you can remove the SD card and review the photos on a computer at home. We recommend that you physically bring the SD card home to review the photos. That way, you can email any suspect or interesting photos to us by emailing brook underscore schreier at ofah.org or info at invadingspecies.com. For this reason, it is important to bring along your second SD card for replacement each time you visit the bait site. When reviewing photos, we ask that you do not delete any photos as they will be compiled and potentially used in the future. At the end of the surveillance season, please remove the camera and all materials from the site and return home. Check the SD card one last time for any suspect or interesting photos. Remove the 8 AA batteries from the camera and ensure all the materials are returned inside of the provided kit. This includes the camera and strap, lockbox, python lock and key, two 16GB memory cards, pad lock and key, and the SD card reader. Using the provided return shipping label, remove the backing and stick it to the top of the kit. Then, with the supplied zip ties, zip tie each lid hole on the kit. Make sure to cut off any excess. Feel free to use packing tape as well, as this will help in preventing any breakage of the kits. Lastly, please deliver the kit to your nearest Purelator office for shipment back to the OFAH. If you have any questions, contact Brooke Schreier at brook underscore schreier at ofah.org or by emailing info at invadingspecies.com. At this point, we just want to thank you, the volunteers, for taking part in the Wild Pigs Grounds program. It's with the assistance of folks like you that allow us to keep our eyes on the landscape and ensure that we never have an established population of wild pigs. As always though, if you see either a terrestrial invasive species or an aquatic invasive species, make sure you give us a call at 1-800-563-7711 or report online at www.eddmaps.org.